ha ha, no way you really did that. Blood, 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 and death. Then we showed Bellwether that we recorded her entire confession with the carrot pen. Wait, the carrot pen that you gave him back then? <gasps> he kept it after all. Aw, oh, that's so nice of... That's so romantic! Well, to tell the truth, her not giving up mentality kinda rubbed off on me. I wondered where she got this big heart of hers from. Ha! 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 Shush, you. You must have been truly exceptional parents, but I bet you must be after over 300 children. Oh, Nicholas, you hear that? They're all... Oh boy, yes we are bunnies, but... <laughs> Judy only has 14 siblings. But... But you said you had 322 brothers and sisters. It's like an umbrella term, Nick. Everyone in the burrow's my brother and sister. Did you think that we just spawned little armies? So, for you bunnies, extended families like the normal family? Oh no, this is far from it. You should have been here on Grandpa's birthday. Bob's sisters and their burrows came over? We were over a thousand. Th thousand? How? Well, in Grandpa's time, 15 kids was the norm. Mom had two sisters and 12 brothers. We bunnies are matriarchal, so the entire family has three burrows, each led by one of the sisters. Brothers split evenly. Everyone has around 15 kids from her generation, too. From mine, around half of them just started to have kids, so let's say 125 times 6. It adds up all right. Judy, I got what you asked for. Oh, thank you, Cotton. Nick, this is my favorite niece, Cotton. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Nice to meet you, little one. We got your bed ready in our dorm. Thank you? Dorm? Ah, we rabbits form dorms based on our likings that work as our closer families. It keeps the burrow together if we don't just socialize with just our own siblings. Oh, so you like your big sis because you want to be a copsy just like her? Well, I thought I might be, but she won't need my help since you came back. That means you aren't mad at her anymore, right? She threw away the fox repellent. Oh, wow, look at the time. Uh, Cotton, shouldn't you be heading to bed? To be honest, I don't think I was really mad at her. You, you don't have to say that, Nick. I was mad at myself. I know how it feels to be written off as something less than others. And I still did it to you. A friend I wanted to trust, but I couldn't. And that's why I was disappointed. Not mad, because I knew you were better. And you did come back, admitting your mistake. That already made you better in my book, Carrots. Nicholas, I gotta apologize too. It was all my fault, really. I wanted you to take the repellent with her, if not for my fear of, well, everything. She would've never. Dad, please stop, you didn't. No, no, your father's right. I too kept lecturing you about that dumb predator biology stuff despite you always speaking up against it. I would have never forgiven myself if Judy lost someone dear to her heart because of the things I filled her head with. Thank you so much for not giving up on her. Aw, uh, don't mention it, Mr. and Mrs. Hops. It's not like you're the first or the last ones to fall for that damned brand's marketing. It was designed to appeal to rabbits, after all. What? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, you remember what color it was. Wasn't it the same as everything else here in Bunnyboro? Well, yeah, pink is the most popular color in the entire Triborough. But do you think the spray was pink too because it was meant only for us bunnies? Check this out. In a squirrel town, they sell something called Raccoon Be Gone. But it's the same cheap stuff as Fox Away, just 
with a different stamp and color. Well, the color might have played a little part in choosing it over other self defense sprays. I never thought about this much, but they demonize a number of species and profit off the fear they generate. I should look into this. Well, sure this is clearly bad, but why are all of you pretending like we had no other reason to be afraid of foxes? Did you forget about Gideon slicing up our little sister's face? What? Why didn't you tell me that? Oh, carrots. I didn't know. That's not what happened. It was a fight between kids. He threatened me, I kicked him. Why are you so protective about Gideon now? I just want Nick to understand why you... The why doesn't make it right. I still shouldn't have just seen a fox instead of a friend. I should have seen Nick. There's no reason I couldn't do that. Just excuses. And I don't want that. Mammals who look for excuses for their mistakes don't actually try to change. Why does he keep calling her carrots? She seems to like it more than Jude the Dude. Gosh darn carrots. I for one hope that you never change. D don't say that! Thanks for making me stay, Carrots. Never knew what a big family's like. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, speaking of big family, Grandpa's back from his nightly stroll. Hello, Pop-Pop. Uh, hello, Trudy. And... So, you're that fox that's my daughter's partner now, eh? Your granddaughter's, yes. Nice to meet you. No, Pop-Pop. This is Nick, my friend from the city. Oh, great. There's two of them already. Place is turning into a fox den faster than a... Sorry. Wait, you are? Am I not? The offer still stands, right? Well, I just didn't dare to hope, but... Aw, oh, you bunnies. We need a pen to finish this, though. Oh my goodness! These are simply amazing, Mrs. Wild! Oh, please, Mr. Clawhauser! You're making my tail wag! Oh my goodness indeed, Mom. Were you preparing for the apocalypse? Oh, I was just so excited that I could finally meet your co-workers! It's the first time I can do that. He was always so secretive about his jobs before. <laughs> no way. Really? I made some carrot-flavored ones, too! They should be... They're here, sweetheart. Oh, you must be... John, Nick's dad. And you must be that certain Judy Hops Nick keeps talking about all the time. Har har. So not true. Don't believe it, Carrots. Huh, <sighs> not true. Your middle name is Laverne. You came from Bunnyborough. You have a family of 324. Your favorite niece is called Cotton. <laughs> Well, I... John, cut it out! All right, all right. You get the picture. Mr. Wild, I have to ask. Where's your wife hiding them? Um, hiding them? Her wings! Because these muffins were baked by an angel! <laughs> uh, that's an excellent question. I've been looking for them for nearly 30 years. Where are they, darling? Out with it. John! <laughs> Stop it! I'm ticklish! Pops, come on! Behave like an adult! And Jumps, stop stuffing your face. They're not just for you. He seems nice, but Nick said... And remember, you're always welcome back if politics don't work out for you, Warden. Thank you, Chief. Was he strict with money? Or simply foreboding? He didn't strike me as that sort of mammal. So, my mom scraped together enough money to buy me a brand new uniform, because, my god, I was going to fit in. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I mean, Nick seems to like him a lot, so... I shouldn't worry so much. Hey, Judy! Can I just call you Judy? Oh, sure, Mr. Wild. I'm happy to see Nick made so many friends he can trust and rely on. And this Swinton... 
I think she'd make a great mayor. Indeed. We all like her. She helped Nick and me a bunch of times. Speaking of whom, what's it like being the father of the very first Fox police officer of Zootopia? What would it be like? It fills me with pride. I'm glad you support Nick's decision to become a cop. My folks weren't crazy about the idea of me becoming one. Hmm. No way. Really? So, I was wondering. Do you not dislike me for prompting Nick to take up such a dangerous lifestyle? Why would I? Do you think that being a cop is any more dangerous than conning a crime boss with a skunk butt rug? Y you know about that? This hustles? Yes, and that's why I have to ask something. You had vital information that the future of the city depended on, and yet you went straight to him to apologize instead of the police to get your badge back and ask for their help. Or the doctors to cure the infected predators. Why my son, the fox who scammed you, whom you had to blackmail into helping you, over your career, over the entire city? I, I didn't really have a choice. Nick stood up for me. I would have lost my badge without him from the get-go. Wait, what? You didn't tell me anything like that. Well, during the case, the chief wanted me to resign. But Nick vouched for me, and even told him off for working against me so much. It was the first time anyone supported me. How could I have chosen anything over him? It was thanks to him that I got that far. I couldn't go on without him. Th thank you. Oh, I should be thanking you. You raised a great son, Mr. Wilde. No, you don't understand. You inspired him in a way I never could. We moved to Zootopia because I believed in the city. And I wanted Nick to grow up seeing that, really, anyone can be anything. Even a fox like me, once a fabric factory worker, could become a tailor with his own shop. So I put all my effort into impressing some bankers for a loan, only to be rejected over and over again, but I didn't give up, even when she asked me to, and I almost lost them because of my stubbornness. I felt so guilty for not going after them that I thought being a role model is the same as being a father. It didn't cross my mind that I make her feel guilty too, making her think she gave up on my dream too easily. We figured that neither of us blames the other. But still, we needed some time to trust ourselves. We learned what it truly meant to unconditionally love and support someone. And for a while, it looked like I was finally doing it right. Up until the night I had to get him out of trouble and became aware of his dealings. And he found out my secret too. Then I ended up getting the loan from Mr. Big. Don't you see, Dad? A fox can only move up in this city by becoming a criminal, or by dealing with criminals. Right there. I could have done it. I should have done it. As a father, it should have been my task to help him. To say something. Anything. But I couldn't. Because the truth is, deep down, I no longer believed in Zootopia either. And I was too stupid to see that he lost so much more than his faith in the city. He needed someone to trust him. He needed a friend. And I failed to be that. That's why I have to say thank you for succeeding where I failed him. For being his friend and believing in him. So he could believe in himself. Thank you. Mr. Wilde, I don't think you failed as a father. I may have been the one that went after Nick and believed in him, but that would have meant nothing. If he wouldn't have been able to accept my apology, maybe you couldn't stop him from making some bad decisions. 
But to not blame someone for a mistake they made, to be kind, to be forgiving, to give another chance, I wasn't the one who taught him those things. Judy taught me that it doesn't matter what I am, only who I am. And you had something to do with who I am, Pops. I have lost hope in the city, but never in you. I always knew you did your best. And you never gave up on me. You helped me become who I am today. So, no matter what I do, I bet you'll never be as proud of me as I am of you. Son. Dad. Thanks for watching. Check the latest episode and also playlist with similar episodes like this one. See you in the next video.